Hello, my name is Steven de Bruyne. I am System Architect at KNX Association, and I will tell you how you can protect your KNX installations from being hacked. Smart homes and buildings can be hacked. Actually, smart homes and buildings are hacked. Also, your building can be hacked. Hackers, they steal data. Hackers take control of your applications. Hackers modify your applications. And hackers turn your installations and devices useless. This leads to an enormous loss of money and investment. A hacker only needs to be able to do a few things. He can be able to sniff telegrams, replay telegrams, inject telegrams, and manipulate telegrams. But there is a solution to all of this, to protect your KNX installation. And this is called KNX Secure. KNX Secure is a set of rules and protocol solutions to protect your KNX installation. First of all, the common security guidelines. First rule. Prevent the access to your installation in areas with uncontrolled access. For instance, on the IP network, which is the most used medium to attack installations and where hundreds of hacked installations have occurred. The major rule is do not make port 3671 accessible over the internet in an unprotected way. The second rule is do not make port 3671 accessible over the internet in an unprotected way. That is not a mistake. This is the first rule. All installations that have been hacked over the internet have been hacked by an open port 3671. Do not simply open this port to the internet. At least map the port 3671 to something different. Hackers can scan the IP address for this default port 3671 to interpret if there is a KNX installation behind. Better is to map it to a different port, use a VPN connection, or even better, use dedicated services, devices, or web services to access the installation from remote over the internet. Further rules, use a separate LAN to, or a separate Wi-Fi domain for home automation. Ethernet can be using virtual LANs. On Wi-Fi, you can use different SSIDs. For the twisted pair and the radio frequency medium, do not let the twisted pair cable be accessible, hanging outside the wall or hanging outside of the ceiling. Block access to distribution cabinets and further um, measures to protect access to the twisted pair installation. Radio frequency is an open medium. Preventing unauthorized access is difficult. There are, of course, counter classic countermeasures, like in couplers, filter the communication point-to-point -point communication, broadcast communication, and group address communication. Check also your coupler parameters. And use a BAU password and note it down. This will prevent that your installation can get modified. What special protocol extensions have been added to the KNX protocol to protect your installation further? We have invented KNX data security. A new service has been uh, designed, our group value right, and the payload has become encrypted. A message authentication is added. Kenix data security can be added in existing installations, and existing couplers and interfaces can interpret and route the telegrams. Therefore, the frame format has not been changed. Source and destination address are unencrypted. That's why we call this data security because only the payload has been protected, has been encrypted. It's possible on every medium. So data security is usable and routable between twisted pair, radio frequency, and KNX IP. We use here standard algorithms like symmetric encryption and 128 MAC calculation. The results of this are, secured communication is protected against eavesdropping, replay, injection, and manipulation. These are the threats that we mentioned before. And additionally, secure devices are protected against unauthorized modification, so reprogramming.
This means that a hacker can no longer, even if he has access to your installation, reprogram your devices and make them useless. There is, however, a consequence that means that all these encryption keys that you have and that are created in your ETS project, you have to have them with you. Without these encryption keys, you cannot access your installation anymore. Also, unknown senders cannot join the secure communication. This means that if you have a tunneling interface or a USB interface, that its individual address must be known to the communication partners, for instance, via a dummy device. How this works in practice is that if a, secu if a secure device has to communicate on the bus, it prepares the message, encrypts it, and sends it on the network. As you can see from the animation, the message routes entirely over the network in a protected way. And it's only the receiver, one or multiple, that can decrypt the message. An extension to let secure devices and plain devices communicate with one another is a security proxy. This allows communication between plain devices and secure devices. It is an extension of a coupler. So the coupler receives plain messages on one side and translates it to secure messages on the other side. This works in both ways and works for group communication. There is also the possibility for a temporary whitelist and a temporary broadcast list so that communication, for instance, for the EDS configuration of your installation is possible across such security proxy. The next field where we have protected KNX for security is KNX IP. In KNX IP, the secure message is encrypted entirely. Source and destination address are not visible, opposite to KNX data security. This frame format is what we call a secure wrapper. There is certain security information in this frame, like a secure session identifier for unicast, making sure that unicast communication cannot be replayed which is also zero for multicast communication. There's a sequence number for unicast, also to prevent replay attacks. And on multicast, there is a timer with a resolution of one millisecond. This gives a hacker only one millisecond time span to re possibly replay, replay a message. The message is also protected by the KNX serial number and a message tag, which are random values and which prevent further replay attacks. All KNX IP secure families can be protected. So device management, tunneling, and routing. And what you see here is that a plain message is received by an IP coupler. The IP coupler encrypts it, sends it on the IP network, and this is received by the other IP couplers and decrypted and sent plain again to the other KNX devices. So we see that the IP backbone is now secured. Obviously, there is also KNX IoT. In KNX IP secure and KNX data security, we don't have any TCP, we don't have HTTP. We cannot add standard um, security algorithms to protect the communication. On KNX IoT, we have used all standard um, protocols to protect the communication. On KNX IoT third party API, we have to start with a basic authentication. This is allowed by the uh, OR2 communication, uh, and it starts with an uh, HTTPS communication. The resource server is the KNX IoT third party server device. It is not required that the authorization server is in the same device. This may, for instance, be a public vendor or a specific server. An access token and bearer token are used. All of these bases on standard RFCs. A confidential client is a client running a web server capable of storing a client secret, like a web visualization server. A public client is not capable of doing that. Is for instance running in a browser or in a smartphone. Also, we make use of different grant types, like the authorization code grant or the client credentials grant. This is related to the design or, or use of the KNX IoT third-party API server in a local environment or in a public environment. That means over the internet. 
The result is that unauthorized access to the third party API is not possible without OAuth2 authorization. And the interface can thus not be misused to sabotage or to modify the installation. The second IoT protocol that we have is the KNX IoT Point API, which plays between KNX IoT devices directly. Here we have various um, functionalities that all base again on standard RFCs. We have device identity enrollment and device identity certificates. Enrollment is required. Without permission to join the network, the device cannot communicate on the network. This can be done by a dedicated registered device, but also by the ETS. This means that a hacker cannot simply connect his interface to the installation and start sending and receiving messages. We also define access scopes and define device access control lists. As the application layer security, we make use of OSCOR, which is used for group communication and runtime access. This bases on pre-shared keys, which are established by the ETS. This is the end-to-end -end and faster than setting up DTLS sessions. It protects the REST API. The result of this is that unauthorized devices cannot join the network, and they will not get the keys and will not be able to communicate, listen, or send with the point API devices. This ends my short presentation on KNX Secure. So remember, there are a number of practical things that you can do to prevent the access to your installation. You can find all of this in the KNX Secure checklist. And KNX now has the features of KNX Data Security, KNX IP Secure, and Security as supported natively in KNX IoT. Make use of these features and protect your installation and protect your investment. Thank you. Thank you.